For every sold-out game between the Yankees and the Mets in the Subway Series, there are countless amateur games taking place in front of very few fans throughout the tri-state area. Those are the fields where Ed Ford hung out, the fields in Jersey City, New Jersey. Ford was an icon in the city, a man who impacted people who eventually made it to the major leagues, the NBA, and even the Basketball Hall of Fame. He died 14 months ago at the age of 65, but no one has forgotten him. Tremendous core values, especially with kids. His word was his bond. He's a legend in Jersey City and did so many great things for the kids. If it wasn't for him, I don't think I would never even been close to a big league ballpark. He had a great sense, a great discipline about him, and he just wants to help. Jack, there's not that many people around that just want to help you. Baseball has always been a sport that connects communities and people. In Jersey City, Ed Ford was the human equivalent of baseball. He was a coach and a supporter of hundreds of kids, but really, in his life, he was more than a coach. He was a baseball scout for several teams. He was a newspaper columnist. He was a recreation director for the city. A roundish man with a booming voice and a blustery approach, he impacted so many people that this field behind me was named after him. Many people came from near and far today to explain why Ed Ford, the Fa, meant so much to them. We were always taught when it comes to race, dealing with another, you treat a human being like a human being, okay? And you get back in return. And that was always instilled in us by, you know, my mother to do that. I can relate to him because, you know, him coming from the projects, me coming from the projects, him just being one of those type of guys that, like I said, like a father figure, you know, and me being from Jersey City growing up, my father being in jail and all that other stuff, that was the type of guy that I needed. He had feelings for the underdog, because he's always been the underdog. He just saw in people potential that they didn't always see themselves. You know, so young kids that just didn't believe in themselves, and now with the fire, is, you've been exposed to Mr. Ford, well, get ready, this is gonna be a magical carpet ride, because you're gonna wind up being a lot better than you thought, and you never thought you were gonna put that many hours in working towards that. The biggest thing that he was really about was uh, who you were, inside and it really wasn't about you know me as a pitcher and what was coming out of my arm he always say don't you change lighter in this day and age there aren't enough people who have their good heart worrying about kids and how good the kids are going to turn out whether it's from an athletic standpoint educational or just being good people and kind of eddie ford really summed up his life by taking care of people you look out and you look at all the people you look at each face and his memories and every one of them faces and every time you look at their face, you see a story with the five. Being from Jersey City, I've never been past five corners. And all of a sudden now, at, at a very young age, I'm in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. North Carolina could have been like in Alaska for all I knew. And, and I was homesick. And all of a sudden, who shows up? It's the five. And I'm, you know, five, what are you doing? He says, ah, I, I just had to come down. He knew that I wasn't feeling good about being down there, and, and I wanted to come home. And he was talking about an opportunity. You're a ball player. You're going to get a great education. You have great coaches here. You're going to meet new friends. And he came down for me. Like, this is the way this guy is. I was in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. We were playing in the instructional league, and I was pitching against the Braves. And I was just mad at the world. I mean, I was out there, my body language was just low, lazy, lack of days, whatever one you want to call it. And then I hear somebody yell way from the top of the bleachers, Willie, you start throwing the ball. These guys are talking junk about you. Let them know where you come from. And I'm like, uh-oh, Fah's here. Got to turn it up. And I went from, I, I promise you, went from like 80, throwing 80 miles an hour to back to 94, 95. Every time I talk about that or I tell that story, it brings like a, almost a tear to my eye because that is genuine love right there. My wife and my son, I had, we had a daughter that was very, very seriously ill. She got hit by a, a drunk driver in Florida and we called the father that night and she was on her deathbed. And the next morning at five o'clock, there was a knock on my door. He flew in from Jersey, Newark, to Tampa, to our house, and we had to go to St. Pete every day because that's where she was in a coma. For three weeks, he took care of my stepdaughter and my two boys every single day, lunch, breakfast, dinner. Those are the things, that's Ed Ford. What he did, I never asked him to come down. He had to come because it was the right thing to do.
It's obvious that the FA helped hundreds and hundreds of kids in Jersey City. I should know. I was one of them. I played on one of his summer baseball teams and learned more about baseball that summer than at any point in my life. I took that knowledge and forged a career as a baseball writer and now as a baseball broadcaster. I have him to thank for that. I stand on this field that is named for him, having this career that I have, in part because of what he helped teach me. That's the best story that I could share about Eddie DeFa Ford.